Hi guys, welcome to Safe Diving. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a reaction video. Uh, so I've been seeing quite a few of these about online and uh, as a professional scuba diver, I figured, hey, maybe I could do one. So yeah, I'm going to be uh, sort of having a quick look at the movie 47 Meters Down Uncaged. So this is the sequel to the original 47 Meters Down, uh, which had a few scuba diving inaccuracies, should I say? Um, but yeah, in this video, uh, I'm basically going to be sort of watching the movie with you guys and um, yeah just sort of reacting to uh, sort of anything that I see anything that could be interesting um, so yeah let's get started so what are we waiting for come on just the first game from my dad. He's miles away. Yeah, they have a different way in. <laughs> Everything we need. I mean, there's no fins, so... Uh, oh, come on, it's the first cave. We're not swimming in the whole city. Okay. Right. Cave diving is dangerous. Cave diving is dangerous. No, Mia is right, Nicole. I don't really know about this. Look, we come all this way, we don't even see the temple. <clears throat> really? It's... Okay, the sort of cave exploration setup now that they should be diving uh, would be much more flexible so that they could fit through a narrow gap. Okay guys, so 47 meters down uncaged. Um, it's definitely a movie. Um, as far as accuracy scuba diving, uh, not the best, uh, but let's break it down. So first of all, we're taking a look at the equipment that they're using. So they're using recreational equipment. They're diving on single cylinders. Um, they're not even wearing fins. So yes, it is all scuba diving equipment. It's all legit. A lot of it's sort of Apex Aqualung, um, but um, no, uh, it's not accurate, especially if they are sort of mapping a cave system. They wouldn't be using recreational BCDs with single cylinders. Um, they'd be using side mounts or even uh, sort of rebreather setups. And, um, and of course, they have fins. So, um, yeah, on, on the equipment side, a little bit odd. Um, they had a few things in there which I'd never seen, like the... Um, uh, the equipment, uh, sorry, the communications equipment where they're talking to one another um, without any kind of earphones um, or any kind of, uh, sort of speaker near their ears, so I don't know how they were communicating with one another. Um, they have their, their magic air gauges which are based on percentages, um, that doesn't exist, um, I, I don't know where that's come from. Um, and they had the, the little um, sort of missing diver emergency beacon, which is basically taken from like fallen firefighters. I believe um, sort of firefighters have a, uh, a little device. Sorry about my dogs just playing in the background, if you can hear that. Um, firefighters, they have a, a little device on them, which if they stop moving for any length of time, uh, it starts sort of going off so that the people, other firefighters can find them. Uh, we don't really have anything like that, at least that I'm aware of for, uh, for scuba diving, so um, that's not particularly accurate. We do have strobes, um, which you can turn off and on, um, and we do have locator beacons when you're on the surface. The problem is with water is that a lot of signals just are, they don't travel well through water, so um, that kind of signal is going to be fairly useless. Um, other than that, the equipment, uh, yeah, as I said earlier, the equipment itself is legitimate scuba diving equipment, but nothing that someone would use in a cave exploration situation, um, and I still don't know why they never gave the girls fins. Um, procedures, uh, so starting way back at the beginning, yes, there was uh, a lot of peer pressure, um, which does exist if you do ever sort of experience peer pressure then um, yeah just resist that um, nobody can force you to go on any dive whether it's into a cave system or not um, yeah just always put your foot down and just say no I'm not going on this dive or if you're on the dive already someone wants to swim into this cave system just tell them no um, so no that's a little bit weird um, actual cave diving there was use of a um, of a guideline for about two minutes um, so that was 
kind of legitimate. The spool that he was using wasn't. It was like a 30 meter recreational spool, uh, very plasticky. Cave explorers, they'll use like a, a 200 meter spool um, with a, uh, a sort of a grub screw, not a grub screw, a um, uh, like a screw locking mechanism so it can just pay out line. Um, this just had like a, a spring thumb, which will get really, really quick. Um, so the guideline itself, yes, we do use that whilst um, sort of cave exploring, but um, not from that type of reel. Uh, other than that, yeah, they're about the only procedures that uh, I kind of saw. I would have changed it. Um, one big thing was not telling anybody where you're diving or when to expect you back, especially if you're diving in an unknown uh, sort of exploratory cave system. Before the dive, you're going to tell someone that stays on the surface where you're going, when you're expected back, and what to do if you don't come back. Basically, who to uh, sort of call in an emergency so that they can come and basically look for you and hopefully rescue you. Um, yeah, none of that happens. So, um, I mean, yeah, obviously it's from the movie, so they're in this secluded spot and they have no rescue. Uh, they've got to get out themselves. But uh, yeah, if you are in a similar situation, then yeah, I'd be telling everybody I know exactly where I'm going. Here it's going to be on the map. Uh, this is where I sort of plan to be. This is when I plan to come back up. And you make that phone call at the end to tell them, yeah, I'm okay, I'm fine. Don't call the uh, emergency services. The animals, underwater animals, we saw two in the movie, a screaming blind um, Mexican cave tetra, uh, which was like the size of a salmon. I don't think they exist, uh, especially screaming. You don't get a lot of vocalizations under the water, except from like mammals. Uh, most fish, they don't really use like acoustic uh, communications underwater that much because sound travels really really well and really really quickly in the water messages can get lost so um, it's, it's not the great uh, greatest we also saw a, a blind great well multiple blind great white sharks that live in caves uh, you know very far-fetched um, and something that size, the size of a great white shark, to survive blind in a cave system, um, no, just uh, sort of bonkers. So um, I, I, that's never really going to happen. Cave species tend to be fairly um, sort of small, uh, slow moving, they're sort of saving their energy because there isn't that much food around. Um, so no, that's, that's never going to happen. Um, the physics of it all, so um, yeah, I, I didn't see anyone equalise, but uh, one of the girls did have that barotrauma um, to, their, um, to their ears as they were being sucked down into the current. So um, yes, that is accurate. As you start to descend, yeah, you need to equalise your ears so the pressure doesn't uh, sort of hurt your ears. Um, the air supply, yeah, was it, it was arguably much more accurate than it was in the previous film, just 47 meters down, um, because then they were down at a sort of greater depths. I don't think they were ever at 47 meters uh, in this movie. If they were, very inaccurate because their air supply would have um, just sort of disappeared much, much faster. Because when you're down at sort of about 50 meters, then yeah, you're breathing air about six times faster than you would on the, uh, on the surface. So, um, no, un unrealistic, your, um, your air supply would only last, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, uh, depending on your size of tank. They only had uh, sort of dumpy 12s, so um, yeah, you, you wouldn't have very much air. Um, other than that, they're in shorty wetsuits. Um, I think one of them was two mil thick, which if you're in an overhead environment, gets pretty cold pretty quick. Um, cave explorers will use neoprene because if you're kind of scrambling in and around sharp rock systems then uh, if you're in a dry suit you have a greater chance of it sort of ripping and tearing and then you're going to get very cold. Um, so in certain areas they will have just a wetsuit um, despite being not as efficient as a dry suit. But uh, yeah, if they do get ripped then this is not an issue but yeah they're usually a bit thicker than uh, sort of two or three mil. Um, 
So what can we learn from 47 meters down uncaged? Uh, so the first is don't bow to peer pressure. Um, no one benefits from that. And um, no one's gonna give you grief. Uh, they might for a few seconds, but uh, actually you're in the right. Um, don't go cave diving, especially if you don't have the right equipment, if you don't have the right training. Um, it's just dangerous. Um, any dives, if you're doing it without the correct equipment or training, is dangerous. Um, never dive without fins. Um, don't use your hands and whatnot to uh, sort of move around in the water. Sort out your buoyancy if you can get neutral buoyancy as best as possible. Then you're not going to um, sort of waste a lot of energy trying to tread water. Um, a lot of sort of beginner divers you, as an instructor, you aim to sort of never let them stop swimming, if that makes sense. Because as soon as somebody stops swimming and they want to stay in position, they normally head upright and they're thinning downwards just to stay at the same level. And that's just stirring up silt, stirring up the bottom. And um, no, so as long as they're kind of moving, then uh, it's fine. You then want to sort of practice somewhere where they can practice their buoyancy and their sort of breath control to, um, to sort out their buoyancy. So, um, and you saw that with these girls. As soon as they stopped swimming, they, uh, they were treading water and the hands and feet were kind of all over the place. Um, yeah, never go in an overhead environment unless you have the proper training. Um, don't bow to peer pressure. Uh, if there are sharks around, just stay nice and close to uh, to a wall so it can only come at you from one direction. Um, and um, realistically, sharks aren't out to get you. All of these Hollywood shark films, the shark is always out to get the protagonist. That's not what sharks are like. Uh, I've been in the water multiple times with sharks and not one has ever come up to me. They're just not interested in us because we're, we're loud, noisy, strange looking creatures. They don't really know what we are, so we could be dangerous to them. So they tend to uh, keep their distance from us. Um, it's usually the scuba divers who are actively swimming towards the sharks because we want to see these beautiful creatures, um, but they don't want anything to do with us. So they keep their distance well away from us. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't sort of worry too much about sharks, uh, sort of especially in the water. So um, 47 meters down, uncaged, a rating as far as scuba diving. Uh, it's only gonna be about three out of 10. They did a few things right, um, but most of it was very Hollywoodized um, and they kind of skipped over some, a few sort of important bits or just made it a little bit, uh, a little, a little bit different. Um, but um, yeah, there are definite lessons to be learned. Um, if there are any other videos, clips um, that you want me to uh, sort of review and look at, um, pop them down in the comments below. Any other movie scenes or whatnot, um, if you can sort of find it on YouTube, find it online, send me a link and I'll, uh, I'll react to those. Um, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Um, pop your comments down below what you thought of 47 meters down uncaged. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.